this gentleman, we're not going to show his face, but he presented with some abdominal pain, and this pain actually has been recurrent maybe four or five times in the last two years, you know, the last two or three hours and go away. Today, probably about six, the pain started. It wasn't real bad at first, and then it just progressed enough to brought him into the emergency department, and, and the pain is in the abdomen. It's the lower abdomen. It's, it's, uh, you can see right basically where it's at, and uh, it's not down in the testicles, but he's got testicular torsion. And, uh, and um, if you ask him if he's got testicle pain, he'll say, no, I don't have, my testicles don't hurt. But if the PA who did the initial exam said he was very tender, she thought maybe there was epididymitis when she palpated the testicle. But the patient was saying that the, the pain after one Percocet was minimal. Before the, before the Percocet, did you have any pain at all? I mean, was it in the testicle? Did you feel pain in your testicles? No. No. Okay. So he felt no pain in his testicles. It was and sore. It was, it was sore when someone touched it. When now, I walked. And when you walked. Okay. So he had a little soreness. Or when you sat down, or, or when you went to the restroom? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but just laying here, I, I asked him again. I said, are you having pain in your testicles just laying there? He said, no. Correct? Right. Right. And it's just belly pain. And the teaching point on this video is to, is to highlight the fact that you can have testicular torsion with just belly pain, and you will have testicle pain if you actually touch the testicles. We examined his, his uh, scrotal area. I can see a little bit more swelling, but there's no redness. And, and uh, when the, the uh, urology resident palpated the testicles, he was not jumping off the bed. He said, you said it was minimal? And she, when she was um, when she was touching it, the, the, when the this this uh, urology resident. Every once in a while, she'd hit a good tender spot, and then. Ugh. Yeah. So so, but you were not having severe pain. Not severe even, pain. Even like my stomach's hurting right now. Yeah, when she was examining you. Yeah. You guys don't want to be in the video either, huh? <laughs> huh? So anyway, so you saw the guy with the the gentleman with the yeah, testicular yeah. torsion, and on your initial examination, what did you find? <laughs> On initial examination, he told me that he had left lower quadrant pain, um, and then he also came in for burning with urination. Uh, I went ahead and did a testicular exam because he had said that uh, about six months ago or so he had had a similar episode of the pain, um, and then he went to an outside hospital, and they said that they couldn't find anything. So during the testicular exam, I noticed that he had uh, tenderness over around the epididymis region, and I was thinking it was either epididymitis or orchitis. But because of the past history, uh, six months ago, I went ahead and decided to do the ultrasound sound and came back with low blood flow. Okay, good. So, but he so, was not but he was not tender at all in the left at the lower quadrant. And so when he didn't have any tenderness in there, it made me think that it was radiation from the testicle. Okay, very good. I mean, that's a profound important thing that a lot of times people miss. The fact that uh, just because you have abdominal pain, but if you can't find an etiology for that, you have to check the testicle cell. Exactly so, right. so the pain that you noted was not was he wasn't like jumping off the bed or anything no, like that at it all. Was very, and um, it was it was I wouldn't say that it was unimpressive. It was enough for me to give him a um, Percocet, um, but it was just a. I guess an index of suspicious of yeah. suspicion. Yeah, but he, off but of he did have pain based on his, when you looked no, at but when you looked at the scrotum and the testicle, did it look abnormal compared? No, the only thing I noticed is that um, he was tender around the epididymis region, so that's why I was thinking. But when but when you but looked at the looked at the scrotum, there was no swelling. There was, there was no, no obvious no swelling. I think it's a little bit more like swollen that. now, but based on my when I saw him, but but the only, uh, the only thing I noticed is that um, he had a decrease in the cremasseri muscle reflex so um, that also kind of heightened the sense of awareness yeah and that's a totally worthless exam but no, we, we no what we did that we did the cremasterix in there with the urology resident yeah. and I you know it's quite it, it, I have to use my imagination to, to try and figure <laughs> yeah. out whether it's working See, I, like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think I did it just to do it but I did you thought it you thought it wasn't present or you thought I it, thought it was I thought it wasn't present like it wasn't there yeah yeah or decreased yeah, but, I mean, how much? I've never done it on. So, was, so it was very minimal, but it was minimal. there was minimal movement, if any at all. At least that's what I saw. But what he told me, I do remember that. Now that you said that, is he told me that he felt like um, his testicles were like just riding way high. Yeah, that's what he told and, me too. Is um, that every time that he was another thing that made right, me think when every time this happened, he twist. said the testicles would go up. Yeah. So it could be, you know, transverse lie. It could be twisting and going pulled up a little bit. So, so. all right, yeah. thanks for letting me uh, do this interview. <laughs>